your mindset and having a powerful mindset and being deliberate about what you're going to think about and what you're not going to think about, it begins the moment you wake up. And believe it or not, how you wake up, not when, but how you wake up and the first few things that you do in the morning will dictate your mood for the rest of the day, which based on science is going to impact your productivity and it's going to impact how you feel about your life. And it will also impact your mindset for the rest of the day. And that's why now that we've done in days one, two, three, four, and five, we've done foundational training. You've learned a tremendous amount about how your brain works, about your default network, about how to be a deliberate thinker. You've spotted your limiting beliefs. You've learned how to think this, not that. You've started the skill and the practice of the skill. Remember, it's a process, not an event, to be a positive thinker. Um, you've started practicing, catching your limiting beliefs and swapping from that default way of viewing the world and thinking about yourself and choosing deliberate thoughts. Now let's talk about physical habits that you can adopt that are very simple, that will be life-changing because they will impact your ability to be in control of what you're thinking and to be deliberate. And that begins with how you wake up. So let me talk about the morning. You can think about your morning routine and whether or not you even have one in the exact same way that we think about the brain. You're either defaulting to something that you've always done that may not, no longer serve you, or you're getting deliberate and choosing to do something that's more positive and powerful because you deserve it. And that starts with your morning routine. So if you're the kind of person where the alarm goes off and you hit the snooze and then the alarm goes off again and you hit the snooze and you know eventually you roll out of bed and you step into your day and you maybe drink a big dark cup of coffee and you skip breakfast and you skip exercise and you're tired if that's how you start your day your mindset is going to be impacted by that if your alarm goes off and you immediately reach for your phone and you start scrolling through Instagram while you're in bed and looking at Facebook and you are putting all kinds of stuff in your brain that triggers FOMO, that triggers insecurity, that triggers anxiety, that is going to impact your mindset for the rest of the day. And so starting tonight, I want you to take control and be more deliberate about your habits in the morning. And what we're going to do this week is we are going to build based on science the most powerful morning routine that you could possibly have. Sorry, I'm just moving this around so that the Instagram channel is brighter. The most powerful morning routine that you could possibly have based on science. It's super simple. It will help you become a more deliberate and positive thinker. And I'm going to walk you through step by step. And you're going to be doing this with more than 230,000 people around the world. So what is the assignment tonight? The assignment tonight is very simple. And you're going to hate it. You're totally able to do this, and most of you are not going to. You're going to let your limiting beliefs and your default mode of thinking stop you from making this simple change. And the thing that I want you to do tonight, this is your assignment. This smartphone right here, I don't want it anywhere near your bedroom. Your assignment is when you go to bed tonight, you are to plug your smartphone in outside of your bedroom. If you live in a studio apartment, put it on the other side of the room. I don't want this phone anywhere near where you sleep. And there's a simple reason why. You're addicted to it. And if it's next to you while you're sleeping, as soon as you wake up, without even thinking, the default mode of your brain will mindlessly reach for this and you will lie in bed and you will look at your phone. And when you do that, you are putting in garbage into your brain before you even get out of bed. If you wake up anxious, if you wake up overwhelmed, if you wake up feeling like you're losing some imaginary race, if you wake up and you feel dread, if you wake up and feel negative or exhausted, I'm telling you, this is the reason why. And if you want to have a positive mindset this year, and you deserve to, then you also have to get very deliberate 
about your habits and about your morning routine in particular, because how you wake up matters. How you wake up determines your mood. How you wake up determines on your phone. Hold on. IG is pausing a lot. Hold on a second. Let's see here. Um, yikes. All right. Hold on a second. IG, uh, I'm getting a lot of, uh, let's get on Wi-Fi. Rendezvous. Let's see if that works. Looks like I'm on. Let's go back to Instagram. Okay. Let's see if that works. Is that better, Mandy? Um, Thank you for your patience, by the way. Normally, our streams are not as spotty, but when we started this program, I knew that I was going to be traveling 24 out of the 35 days that we we're broadcasting live, and tech can be a challenge. And so for those of you that have been hanging in there on Instagram, if it's spotty, jump over to Facebook Live, jump over to YouTube, jump over to Twitter. We're streaming on all four platforms at once. Um, and we will also email you a link to this video, which is one of the reasons why, if you haven't yet, sign up for melrobbins.com slash mindset reset, because we curate all this information for you and we tee it up for you every day. Um, so thank you for your patience as I am broadcasting from uh, my parents' place. My mother's 70th birthday is tomorrow. And um, for those of you that are just tuning in because the stream has been dicey, we're talking about the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. In fact, I would say it's not even powerful, it's critical. You cannot have a positive in control mindset if you don't have control of your mornings. And it makes a lot of sense from a common sense standpoint, right? If you wake up and you're behind the ball, and if you wake up and you've got your phone in your face and you're not even out of bed yet, and you're looking at uh, everybody's perfect life on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter, or you're reading the news and getting stressed out, you're absolutely positively not going to start your day off right. So the assignment that I have for you is a very simple one, and it's one that you're going to be tempted to ignore. Do not ignore this. Tonight, when you go to bed, you are to put your phone as far away from your bed as you possibly can. If you have a bedroom, get your phone charging outside of your bedroom. Turn the vibration off and you can turn the ringer on. Um, and here's why. I know many of you are single parents. I know um, many of you have jobs where people need to get a hold of you. Uh, Instagram is reconnecting again, so I don't know what to make of this. Um, I apologize for the feed on Instagram, everybody. Uh, but if you, if you start your day by looking at this, your mind is hijacked and you're going to be playing catch up all day long. I want to give your brain a fighting chance to be deliberate. Tonight, what I want you to do is sleep without your phone. Plug your phone in outside of your room. And then when you get up, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice that you automatically reach for your phone. Your phone's not going to be there. You see, we're setting a trap. We're setting a trap so that you don't fall into the default mode of laying in bed and looking at that thing. I want to give you a chance to catch your thoughts. I want to give you a chance to do a couple things in the morning based on science that will give you control over your day, that will boost your mood, and that will help you develop a much more deliberate and positive mindset. I love routines as well, but what if you let go of your routine? Can you still embrace yourself and the day? I'm not sure I understand the question. I love routines as well. I think that, yes, you can work. If what you're basically saying is you have a morning where you don't do your normal routine and now it's noon and you realize, my gosh, I've spent the day, the morning in a negative mindset. Can you catch yourself? Absolutely. You absolutely at any moment during the day can catch negative beliefs. You can catch limiting beliefs. You can catch yourself when you default to the negative things that you've trained yourself to think. And you can five, four, three, two, one in five seconds flat. You can switch to a more positive belief. Absolutely. You can change your attitude like that. No question. You can put the force fields up if you feel yourself getting sucked into somebody else's drama. What I'm trying to tell you is that while that's possible, and while you should do that all day, particularly as you are practicing the skill of having a positive mind, 
I am here to tell you based on personal experience that when you start to own your morning and when you start to take your morning routine seriously as a habit that you develop that contributes to your mindset and your happiness and your sense of control, it will change your life. If you're concerned about anxiety, having a morning routine that I'm going to walk you through step by step this entire week, this is key to curing yourself of anxiety. And it begins the night before. So Betsy asked, is it better to prep the night before? Absolutely. So the night before, I um, always plug my phone into the kitchen or I plug it into my closet. I turn off the alerts on my text messages. I turn off the buzzing and I leave the ringer on in case there's some kind of emergency. My kids know that they should call me if they need to reach me. We have a daughter who's in college and, you know, kids are all over the place these days. My business partner knows, call me if you need to reach me. Do not text me. And that one habit has changed my mindset for the better. It's changed my life for the better because when I wake up in the morning, I actually get out of bed. I don't scroll through my phone. And because my phone is nowhere near me, I don't even reach for it. I spend the first 30 minutes to an hour of my day before I even look at my phone. And it has been a game changer, both in my ability to cure my anxiety and in my ability to be deliberate about what I want, A, to be thinking about, and B, what I want to be focused on for this day. Um, uh, Tatiana on Instagram, I switch my phone to airplane mode or turn it off completely for the night. Is this okay or the equivalent? It's, it's definitely okay, but I don't want it near your bed because I don't even want you tempted to reach for this thing and to start scrolling through it. You, we, we live in a moment of time, here comes my father, where we need to have major boundaries with our phone. This right here, it's supposed to be a tool, but we have become the tool. Advertisers know that they can make money on your attention. So when you look at this, whether you're looking at your email or you're looking at Facebook or you're looking at social media, you are giving the world your most precious commodity, which is your attention. And so you're going to hear me hammer the fact that boundaries with this essential for your mindset, essential for your happiness, essential for your success. Um, Vicki from Twitter, why is morning routine so important? What two to three items should be a part of it? Why is the morning routine so important? A couple things. How you wake up has a scientifically proven impact on your ability to focus, on your happiness, and on your productivity all day. This is not something I've made up. This is well-established research. And I'm going to be explaining it to you in bite-sized pieces all week long. And so to preview it, we're going to be talking about this tomorrow morning. The two to three pieces of it are, for me, I wake up when the alarm goes off. And I'm going to explain the science why the snooze alarm is uh, horrendous for your productivity. It actually impacts the way that your brain functions when you do it. We'll explain that in a training this week. I then get up and for the first couple minutes of the day, I plan my day. And I have a particular process that I go through that leverages something from Harvard Business School called the Progress Principle. Uh, I have a mindfulness practice. That could be anything that you want. It could be gratitude journaling. It could be meditation. It could be five slow, deep breaths. It could be taking your, your dog outside for a walk. And then on mornings when I can, I have a micro exercise practice where I do planks for five minutes or I do something to get my blood pumping on the mornings that I can. I, and I do all that before I ever even look at my phone because I put myself and my mindset first deliberately before I ever allow the world access to my mind. You do not want anybody to have access to what's going on up here until you've gotten deliberate about what you're thinking about first. Um, so that's a preview, but I'm going to, as I promised, this was going to be bite-sized stuff. 
If you've, if you've already watched the first 10 minutes of this, you got the training for today, which is the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. And your morning routine begins the night before when you plug your phone outside of your bedroom and you go to bed without your phone anywhere near you. Um, the other reason why that's important is we know based on research that the blue light on these things impacts your ability to fall into a deep sleep. Sleep is essential for you to have a healthy mindset. And also when you wake up, if this is next to you, 87% of adults sleep with their phones or next to their phones. And 33% of adults check email in the middle of the night. And so whether you're willing to admit that or not, we want to break your habit of giving the world access to your mind and we want to make you more deliberate about how you are with your phone and the reason why is it has a direct scientific researched impact on your mood and your mindset all day. Um, I have time for just one or two more questions. Uh, if you have any other questions about this, seeing a ton of, but my phone is my alarm, I have kids. Do you see the excuses everybody? What's more important? If you have kids, do exactly what I told you. Leave the ringer on. If your kids need you, they can call you. If your boss needs you, they can call you. And this is really important for your kids too. You know, there's a lot of research about kids and phones and how they're hugely addicted. And the thing about kids and phones, particularly phones in their bedroom when they're going to sleep at night, is that if you have teenagers, teenagers are biologically hardwired to push away from their parents when they become teenagers. Their friends become their primary uh, support group. They become the most important thing in their life. And kids feel a obligation to stay connected to their friends. And they feel an obligation that if I'm not available for my friends, you know, that makes me not a good friend. And so to help your kids, you need to draw the boundaries for them. You need to tell them that they can't have their phone in the um, bedroom. You need to have a charging station in the kitchen and you need to model these very healthy and mandatory boundaries with technology, period. And so I get it. Your kids need to reach you. No problem. Plug it into the closet. Plug it into the bathroom. Turn the ringer on. If there's an emergency, they can call you. Yes, you can use your phone as your alarm. Plug it into the bathroom. Plug it into the closet. Plug it into the kitchen. Because if the alarm is going off outside of your bedroom or several paces away from your bed, guess what you're doing when the alarm goes off? You're getting up. And tomorrow... I'm going to explain the science behind why you need to get up when the alarm rings and why you should not hit the snooze alarm. I don't hit the snooze alarm because I understand the neurological impact that the act of snoozing has on your mindset, on your mood, and on your brain's ability to focus. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about tomorrow. The reason why you have to get up when the alarm rings, and it's not because it sounds like a good idea, it's because of the science behind how your brain works and what hitting the snooze button and drifting back to sleep for 15 minutes does to your mind. I have studied morning routines, journaling methods, the science of productivity. It has taken me three years to figure out the perfect morning routine journaling method. It takes me less than five minutes, less than five minutes. Each prompt in the journaling method is backed by science. It is designed to make your mindset more powerful. It's designed to give you control. It's designed to leverage the world's most powerful research around focus and around happiness. And literally it takes you less than five minutes. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step this week, the science behind each one of the prompts. I invite you to print this out. I invite you to go to the five second journal and look at the science. And I invite you to think about what's working for you so you can create a morning routine that really empowers your mindset. Because I don't want you to wake up in the morning and immediately let the world in. You're under siege all day long from the world, from your friends, from your work, from your emails, from your social media, from the television, from the 24-hour news cycle. Your dreams deserve 
10 to 30 minutes in the morning for you to get your head on straight, for you to focus yourself on things that are positive, for you to figure out how to build momentum and make progress on something that matters to you today, and for you to work on building your deliberate way of thinking so that by doing so, you're going to reprogram your default network in your brain so that your mind automatically starts filtering the world in a way that works for you. That's why I'm teaching you this, because it's all building on the things you learned in week one, on days one, two, three, four, and five, okay? We're on day nine now. So the first prompt is very, very simple. And the first prompt is all about your mood. So the second that you wake up, remember you're going to get out of bed, if your alarm is your phone, you're going to turn the alarm off, but you're going to leave your phone where it is, and you're not going to take your phone with you to journal, because I do not want you tempted to even look at it. I want your head clear. I want you present. I want 10 lousy minutes for your dreams. Don't your dreams deserve that? Doesn't your sanity and your happiness and your sense of control deserve 10 lousy minutes in the morning? Of course it does. So the first thing I want you to think about is your mood. And the reason why I'm starting with your mood is because there is tremendous research about your mood in the morning and how the mood that you have in the morning and the energy level that you have can impact your confidence all day long. It can impact your productivity all day long. And it's super important for you to do something first thing in the morning to get present to your mood and your energy and then do something intentional to boost it because that will have an established science-backed proven impact on your productivity and your focus and your happiness all day long. So there's a very simple prompt at the top. It just is, how do I feel? This is your inner compass. This, this is how you read your energy. Um, it's a little scale, much like a gas tank in a car from empty to full, depleted is empty and full is energized. Me, this morning, I woke up feeling meh, meh. You wanna, and then over here, you're gonna explain why do you feel this way. Now it's important to identify why you feel meh, or why you feel energized and excited, because it makes you present. You see, we're tuning you into your inner wisdom. We are teaching you how to be present and mindful, and even if, when you get present, you get present to something that's negative, we're teaching you how to turn it around. See, negative isn't bad, it just is what it is. When you recognize that you woke up and you're feeling Neh, which is how I felt this morning, now that you're present to it, you've got the power to get deliberate and shift it. So why did I wake up and go, Neh, I'll tell you why, because there was a, some woman in the room next to me who was awake at 4.15 this morning yapping to the person next to her. They weren't, you know, doing anything that I hate hearing in a hotel room, other people through the wall, if you know what I mean, I'm keeping this family friendly. But she was just talking and talking and talking. And then I woke up again at 4.37 and I woke up again at 5.12 and I woke up again at 5.57. And then I woke up again at 6.20. And then I just got up. I mean, my alarm hadn't even gotten up yet. And I was so annoyed. And that's why it was like, meh because of this chick next to me in the hotel room. I was so, that is actually the first thing that I said to Mandy. So I wrote down, I feel this way because I kept getting interrupted in my sleep and woken up by this person and that bothered me. And the other reason why I feel meh is my neck kind of hurts. Sleeping in so many hotel beds, it's been lousy for my 50 year old neck. So now the next thing that you're gonna do, how long did that take? Five seconds, five seconds to circle this, five seconds to explain why. Now the next one, most important, to feel more energized, I can. We wanna boost your mood in the morning. It takes five seconds to think about it. So I wrote down, I'm gonna get up and exercise. So my business partner, Mandy and I, we schlepped our way to a soul cycle class, a 45 minute spin class here. It was, I am not, I'm not in spin shape. That's what I learned this morning. But let me tell you, it boosted my energy. So in just those three five second questions, I have leveraged very profound and powerful science around mood to take control of my mindset. I could have easily in my old life woken up, been interrupted by some woman next door to me in the hotel all night long, been annoyed about it, 
carried that like, oh, I didn't get enough sleep all through my entire day. All through my entire day. How many of you have done that? You got a lousy night's sleep or somebody interrupted you when you're sleeping in a hotel, like what happened to me, or the dog barked and had to go out at three o'clock in the morning, or maybe one of your kids came home after a night of partying and then you were upset and you had to deal with that. Then you went back and so you wake up and your mood is lousy and then all day long, you basically make one moment where you wake up in a bad mood become a bad day. You're not gonna do that anymore. That's the power of a mindset reset. And that's why you're going to start with mood when you wake up. Today, we are building on your morning routine. We have already covered in week one, default versus deliberate thinking. We have already covered, this is driving me nuts, this little line here. I think that's a little bit better. We've already cut, oh, see, I'm, I'm sorry. For those of you on Instagram, you can't see that there's like a lightsaber going through my face on the Facebook broadcast, but whatever. Um, if I get closer, maybe that'll work because it is driving me bananas. <laughs> this is what it like. This is what it's like to live with ADD. Um, we have already covered deliberate versus default thinking. We've covered the science of visualization. We've talked about how to spot limiting beliefs and how to become the kind of person that when you notice that you're thinking this and it doesn't serve you, that you deliberately think that something that is positive, that is a story about you. I want to tell you something. Um, just this morning, I was talking to one of my favorite people, and she has the exact same story that I used to have, that she's a bad person. And so consequently, she sees evidence all over the place for where she's bad. And she's going through this big breakup right now, and the person that she is breaking up with, basically, while the breakup process was happening, she bas he basically said to her, in a number of different ways, you're a bad person. Push the button push the button, push the button, push the button. We all have buttons that anybody or anything can push. And that's why it's so important if you have limiting beliefs from your past that you change them. Because if you tell yourself that you're a bad person, you will see evidence that you are. And more importantly, you will also start to act consistently with a bad person. <clears throat> and here's the truth, you're not a bad person. My friend is an amazing person. I'm an amazing person. And so it is critical for you to take control of your life and of your thinking. And it starts with the story that you say about yourself. And so we were talking this morning about how in this next chapter post breakup, the most important thing to go forward with is the belief and the deliberate thinking that you are a good person. Look for all the good things that you do. Look for the people that are around you that do love you deeply. Look at how compassionate you are. Look at the little changes that you're making. Look at the little wins all day. Look at how helpful you are. Find the evidence and it's gonna make it easier and easier and easier for you to continue to be deliberate about what you're thinking about. So we've already covered all this. You can go back and review all the videos on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page anytime that you want. Anybody can sign up for this, melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. I want to give some shout outs to some people because I cannot believe how many people are changing their lives. But let me stop that. I actually can believe. I can believe how many of you are changing your lives. And here's why. It took me about 45 years to really seriously start to go to work on how I think to dismantle the limiting beliefs that I have. And when I did, it was such a profound game changing level of personal development for me that I know personally how it can shift the ground that you're standing on when you shift the thoughts that you're thinking. And so I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that if you're actually trying the micro things that I'm telling you to do every single day that are building not only on decades of science and research, but they're building every day on one another. We started out with thinking habits and now right now you're in the middle of a training about your morning routine. And I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But when you make these tiny changes, particularly about how you think, it will change everything about your life because you don't realize it, but we walk through life with a filter and that filter has been programmed by the stories that you tell yourself. And the filter 
reinforces the stories because that filter that you see the world through, wouldn't it be nice if we just saw the world through glitter? This filter that you have, if it's negative about yourself, you're only going to see negative things and you're only going to have negative things come in. And when nice things happen to you, you're not going to believe that you deserve it. So it's essential that we identify the filter that you see the world through and we remove it. And we put something that's clear and that's amplifying and that's positive in its place. And one of the things that's really important in addition to the mental habits is your morning routine. And the reason why your morning routine is so important is because it's the start of your day. If you wake up and think crappy thoughts, you are setting the table to have that continue. And so I am training you to take control of your morning and it begins with what you do as soon as you wake up. We've already covered why you should leave your phone in the outside of your bedroom at night. We've already covered the science behind why when the alarm gets up, you need to get up. You should not hit the snooze button because it puts you in a, a neurological state called sleep inertia that impacts your focus, your happiness, your mood. We have also talked about the fact that your dreams are worth 10 minutes. I actually think they're worth an hour, but most of us only have 10 minutes before the chaos begins. So I want you to find 10 lousy minutes for your dreams every morning. So after you turn off your alarm, you get out of bed, do not look at your phone. You go straight to a spot and you take this little template that we gave you for free. Just go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. You can also find this, by the way, at fivesecondjournal.com. So on the website 5, the number 5, secondjournal.com, you will find not only this downloadable template, but you're going to find a ton of videos about the science behind uh, the journaling method I use, the science and research uh, that's very recent about productivity. And today we're going to talk about my most favorite piece of research, and that comes from Harvard Business School, and it's called the Progress Principle. So I'm going to walk you through my journaling method. This is the one that I did today. Um, oh. You can't see it on Instagram. Hold on a second. There we go. And so today, today in my journal, first of all, we covered this yesterday. Really important for you to start with assessing your mood. And the reason why we want you to assess your mood is because research proves that your mood first thing in the morning impacts your level of productivity, your sense of focus, and your happiness all day long. So super important as a mindfulness act to wake up and tune in and ask yourself, well, how am I feeling? Am I depleted or am I energized? In yesterday's video, I shared that I kind of circled this near the depleted in the meh kind of end because somebody had kept me awake in the hotel all night. Well, today I'm really good. And the reason why, I, why I'm really good, and this is probably too much information, is because I'd been kind of backed up after our uh, holiday trip to Tanzania, if you know what I mean. And so yesterday, the train finally got moving again. And so I feel really good. I'm also home so I can cook dinner for the family. And I was able to drop off my son and pick up my son. And that just makes me feel really, really good. Um, to feel even more energized, I went to yoga class today. Um, and so this is what we covered in yesterday's video, but I'm just showing you. These questions take five seconds. And if you learn how to tune in, to read your energy, and then to think of one thing you could do to boost it. By boosting your mood, you're going to boost your focus, you're going to boost your productivity, you're going to boost your sense of control. It's pretty amazing. The next thing we're going to talk about is this puppy right here. This is the most powerful part of the five-second journal. And again, don't buy it. You don't need to. We emailed you free templates that you can use. You don't ever need to buy this thing. You can just do this in a journal somewhere. You can do this in your own journal. You can do this in a notebook. You can do this in your head, whatever you want. Um, this is the progress principle. This sucker right here has changed my life and it, it helps me be a wildly successful woman. Um, you know, we're launching a brand new daytime talk show that's going to have a staff of 70 people and it's 175 shows a year. My business partners, Mandy and Chris and I run a media company in Boston. We have a project launching with Audible Originals on February 7th. We put out videos every single day on social media. We are engaging with more than a million people a day on social media. Uh, on top of that, we have a ton of, you know, I'm delivering 47 speeches between now and the end of May, and I'm still married after 23 years, and my kids talk to me. So I think I'm doing pretty good. And part of it is because I've learned to leverage the progress principle. I don't try to get everything done. Every morning after I assess my mood, 
based on research from Harvard Business School. I leverage something called the progress principle. And this is what the progress principle states. The people that feel the most productive and the most satisfied with their work are people who make meaningful progress on something that matters to them. That's it. That's it. They're not the people that get 155,000 things done. The progress principle states that if you make little progress every single day, just incremental steps forward on something that matters to you, you will be more productive, you'll be more satisfied, you'll be happier, you'll be more fulfilled, you'll be more present. And I got to tell you, based on personal experience, this has been a game changer for me. So today, my top project, this is my top project. Brace yourself because it's not that, that ground shaking. My top project today was simply to brain dump in one place all the loose things that I want to make sure are getting done in our company. That's it. All the projects that I just, that, that's it. That was just the top project that popped into my mind. Then you're going to say this project matters to me. Why? Well, it matters to me because it stresses me out when I feel like there are loose ends to things and when I feel like I don't know what's happening. And so I need to do this for me. What's one small action I can do to move forward? One small action. You want to see how incremental this is. The only action that I committed to taking today based on the progress principle was to carry my five second journal around so that I could use the other side to brain dump the things that I want to make sure that I'm capturing so I can go over um, this list with the team. That's it. That's it. And I've been brain dumping things as they come up. And there's not as many loose ends as I like manifest in my head. But the good news is I'm making progress. I feel accomplished. I feel satisfied. And so will you. So all I want you to do today is I want you to continue everything that we've talked about. The, the kind of training part is over. We're trying to keep these training modules around 10 to 15 minutes. So the training part's over. Out of service to you, let me do a recap of what I want you to do today. And then I'm going to do some shout outs and I'm going to answer a few questions. So by way of recap, what is your assignment? Well, your assignment always and forever from this point forward, when you do a mindset reset, it's not an event, it's a process. It's something you practice all day long. The moment you notice that your thoughts are drifting to something that's not serving you, you're going to get deliberate and you're going to direct your thoughts to something that are positive. That's something you're going to do all day long. Visualization, also something that's super important. At the beginning of January, we covered the science of visualization. This is one of the most important videos I've ever done because I explain the reason why visualization works and I also explain the two-step method for how to visualize based on science. So if you haven't watched that, go to January 1st or January 2nd, find the video, watch it, look through your emails. It's all there. Um, but practice visualization. Now, the way you set yourself up for your morning routine, because that's what we're covering yesterday, today, and on the 11th day, we're going to do the final two prompts in the, my, the morning routine that I do. Tonight, I want you to plug your phone in outside your bedroom. You're going to turn off all the alerts. You're going to leave the ringer on and you're going to set your alarm. You're going to go to bed. When the alarm goes off, no snooze button. Get up, turn off the alarm, and then go take those first 10 minutes of the day and you use them to create a powerful morning routine to help you get focused, to help you think positive things, to help you identify your priorities, and to help you make progress on your dreams, something that matters to you. I invite you to use the one that we emailed to you, the five second journal method. You're going to assess your mood and you're going to do the progress principle. You can also move down to the other final prompts. I'll be explaining those in tomorrow's training. If you want to include visualization in your morning routine tomorrow, fantastic. If you have time to do a little micro exercise, fantastic. If you want to add in something else like five deep breaths or go walk the dog in the woods, whatever, whatever works for you, because if it works for you, you'll do it. Okay. I'm trying to get you to become more deliberate about the way you're waking up and what you're thinking about and how you start your day so that you can figure out the best way that works for you. I have a morning routine. It does not involve sitting in an infrared sauna or drinking mushroom tea or spending two hours of class 
or spending 45 minutes meditating. And the reason why my routine does not look like that is because I have three children, a business to run, and I don't have time for that. So my routine is something that's very simple that is backed by science. And the mornings that I do my routine, my whole life falls into place because I've started my running off in control. Now I want to talk to you this morning about a challenge that I'm issuing to you. You ready for the challenge? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for the challenge. This is a challenge that I want you to take on uh, as you are thinking about your own routine. And routines are super important for your mental health. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. One of the reasons why we're doing Spring It On with Mel Robbins is because decluttering your mind, detoxing your friendships, refreshing your routines, and boosting your belief in self, those are four powerful things that bolster and empower your mental health, that make you feel more confident and in control. And your morning routine is super important when it comes to starting your day right, when it comes to thinking positive thoughts. whether or not you feel in control. And that's why I'm gonna issue you this challenge. Tomorrow morning, and for those of you that have been for a while, I know what the challenge is. Do the positive I want you to take the snooze alarm. You don't have to become a morning person. You just have to get your ass out of bed, okay, and get going. Uh, that's how you run your life. That's how you make your dreams happen, and that's how you take control of your mental health. Let me tell you something. Tomorrow morning, I want you to take the snooze alarm challenge, and I want you to see what impact it has on your mental health. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. You're going to set your alarm tonight. When that alarm goes off tomorrow morning, you're going to use my five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, to silence the excuses, to interrupt the habit of hitting the snooze button, to stop yourself from doing what I used to do. I used to be one of those people that would lay in bed in the morning when the alarm would go off and I would start thinking about my day and my to-do list and my problems and everything that stressed me out. And as I would lie there <coughs> thinking about these things, you know what had happened? They'd get louder and heavier and you okay honey you're good you need some water you're turning right red you're good give everybody the thumbs up can stop worrying about you okay she's good she's good excellent and we're at a red light so that was a perfectly timed cough so I but as I would lie in bed and think about my problems they would get worse I was putting myself in a negative state of mind I want you to hear that alarm and push yourself out of bed. Do the challenge, which means get out of bed in five seconds when the alarm rings, because it will put you in a positive state of mind. What happens if you hit the snooze button? You drift back to sleep, and then two things happen. You wanna know what happens? Number one, you wake up late. You wake up late and behind. Guess what that does to your mental health? It puts you in a negative state of mind. <coughs> and you also, by the way, blew off the alarm, which means you started your day by breaking a commitment to yourself by not getting out of bed. The other thing that you do, and I explain all this in the five second rule book, I explain it in videos all over the internet. When you hit the snooze button and drift back to sleep for 15 or 20 minutes, you know what happens? Your brain drifts into a state called sleep inertia, which means your brain goes back to sleep. When you then wake up again 15 minutes later and interrupt that deep sleep state, you're now in a state called sleep inertia, which impacts your brain's ability to process information, to remember information. Basically, you're in a fog for four hours. So you've also negatively impacted your mental health. So 
what I want you to do tonight is I want you to set your alarm and I want you to accept the snooze alarm challenge. How many of you are going to do this? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a wave. Tell me where you're watching from and let me know that, yes, Mel Robbins, I am going to spring it on with my life. I'm going to reset my routine and I'm going to go back to something basic that has not only powerful science behind it, but it will positively impact my mental health. That is, I'm gonna accept the snooze alarm challenge. I'm gonna set my alarm tomorrow morning when that alarm goes off, I'm gonna five, four, three, two, one, use the five second rule, and I'm gonna get my rear end out of bed. That's all I want you to do today. That's it. Because I know you've got a bazillion other things going on, and I feel like if I overwhelm you with too much, you'll do nothing. You're gonna be just like me. So today, when the alarm went off, I did not want to get out of bed. And you want to know why? I did not want to get out of bed because I had incontinence testing today. This is a map of a surgery I'm having on Monday. The alarm woke up and I immediately realized, oh my God, today is the day that I've got to go to the gyno urologist and I've got to get testing to see how much I leak. And it turns out I leak a lot. So I had all kinds of catheters in my future and I had all kinds of probes that were gonna happen and I'm a little nervous about this surgery, although I feel a lot better. So as I woke up this morning, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to hit that snooze button. I wanted to lay there and think about what I was worried about or all the things I needed to do. And instead, I do what I do every morning. I don't feel like getting out of bed. Honestly, I'd prefer to lay there and wallow because it's a habit sometimes. But I always, five, four, three, two, one, force myself to get up because I know it's the best thing that I can do for my mental health. And I know that laying there in bed and worrying about the testing that I needed to have done isn't going to make the testing better. It's gonna make it worse because it's going to build it up in my mind to some big nasty thing and I'm gonna walk in there anxious. Well, guess what? We're on our way back from the testing. The testing went well. I have extreme stress incontinence, which means hopefully insurance is paying for this sucker. Um, and we'll be taking you behind the scenes because 50% of women have incontinence issues. And I'm not the least bit embarrassed by the fact that I have this. I'm annoyed, which is why I'm getting it fixed after two decades of struggling with this. I digress. You know, I have this saying that I love, and this is what I'm going to leave you with. If the problem you're facing can be solved with action, you don't have a problem. Let me say that again. If the problem that you're facing, you don't have a job, you're struggling with alcoholism, you're single and you're embarrassed by it, you leak like I do, you don't have the amount of money you wish you had, you doubt yourself. If you have a problem that can be solved by action, and there are very few of them that can't be solved by action, you, my friend, do not have a problem. You got that? I know I have been hammering the point that you have to create a routine if you want to be happy, successful, and uh, feel confident and in control. And so many of you have asked me, what is my morning routine? So today I decided to walk you through it. So I wake up at 6.15 to this alarm clock that simulates the sunrise. Then I pet my dog. Then I always make my bed. Uh, this is a really important tip. So the night before you uh, are going to sleep, lay out your exercise clothes because when you see them in the morning, it acts like a trigger in your mind to remind you of your promised exercise. And even though I get dressed, I don't feel like exercising. Here's another pro tip. I program my mind to be positive all day and I practice gratitude while brushing my teeth. I brush with my non-dominant hand, which is the hand that you normally don't write with. So I brush my teeth with my left hand because I'm a righty. And then as I am brushing my teeth with my left hand, I have to pay attention because uh, it's not really a natural thing to do. And as I'm paying attention, I have my gratitude practice where I think about what I'm grateful for. I love it when the spring flowers are coming up. We've turned our family room into a gym and uh, I have uh, tagged a bunch of the classes and instructors that I love for you to check out. Oh, got to go to the bathroom. Oh, there's Chris. Uh, now let's get started with the class. Braxton, here we go. Oh, forgot my water bottle. I have terrible ADD. It is true. What do I put in my water bottle? Baraka. Holly Jacobs from Sony Pictures Television. I love you for introducing me to this. Kind of hard to exercise when you have a puppy, but makes you grateful. Uh, what do I eat for breakfast? Either a smoothie or eggs from the chickens across the street. 
And I'm telling you right now, your morning routine is everything. So get up early and find time for yourself. So there you have it. That's my typical morning routine and it never fails. Every morning that I stick to my routine, I have a much more powerful day. And the mornings that I don't stick to the routine suck, honestly, because I wake up behind the ball. When I get up, when the alarm rings, I have made and kept a promise to myself. When I make the bed, I am uh, completing something before I leave the bedroom. And I also, whenever I walk back into the bedroom, I see something that has been accomplished. I don't see a mess that needs to be completed. Um, by prioritizing my physical and mental health and getting some exercise in, I not only feel better mentally, but I also release chemicals in my brain that helps me focus. There is no doubt that having a powerful morning routine is part of every successful person's programs. It is something that you deserve. It is something that you should create for yourself. And it is something that will improve your life. Now, I wanna challenge you, put your morning routine tomorrow morning on social media. Put it on your stories, uh, do a collage of photos, and please tag me and describe your morning routine because I am gonna be watching, I'm gonna be cheering for you, and I'm going to be celebrating people on my story for the next week who are putting their morning routines out there. Remember, morning routines, are amazing, so make one that works amazingly well for you. Here's what we know happens when you add a simple high five to your morning routine. Number one, you get a drip of dopamine, and dopamine is critical. The reason why dopamine is critical is because it boosts your mood. When you simply high five yourself, your brain recognizes the high five because the programming's already in here. Your brain knows what to do when the high five is coming. Boop, dopamine. Dopamine's important because it boosts your mood. We know that your mood in the morning impacts productivity all day long. Second thing that it does, as you go to raise your hand, the first time you do it, you're gonna be thinking, Mel, Scott, you, you two have lost me on this. This is so stupid. Like your critic is gonna be going because this part of your brain is gonna be engaged. The second you get close to me or something crazy happens, your mind goes silent. Your mind goes silent because your brain is now triggered by the action. This is called neurobics, an entire field of study about neuropathway activity and physical motion. Your brain goes quiet because your brain recognizes a high five. And so it grabs all the neuro association and programming in your subconscious and it marries it with your reflection. A high five has always said, I believe in you, I see you, I love you, you got this. It is celebration, it is belief, it is confidence, it is optimism, it is resilience, it's motivation. A high five, never in the history of high fives has a high five been, have a terrible day, you are the worst, you're gonna fail. That's not what a high five means. That's why your critic shuts up because the high five programming that's already in your brain overrides it. It's incredible. That's the third thing that happens. As you repeat this new action your brain is watching, this isn't a mantra, which doesn't work by the way. This is a physical habit your brain is witnessing you do. So your brain starts to see you treating yourself with kindness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, support. Your brain's filter, the reticular activity set, system is paying attention. It's changing in real time. Do you realize that after adding a simple high five to my morning routine, it took about five days for this to happen, by the way, but I've now done it since April of 2020, every single morning after I brush my teeth, I stack the habit together. It's now programmed as a habit loop in there. Don't even think about it. The benefits are incredible. When I see myself in the mirror, it wouldn't occur to me to think something negative because I have fundamentally rewired my mind. I see a human being that I'm rooting for. I see the person I high five every morning. It's freaking unbelievable. And the way that it's changed me as a leader, I don't look at what's wrong. I focus on what's working. And when something screws up, like this morning, we, I put up a big post this morning about uh, depression because my husband is now publicly talking about the long-term depression that he's had and that he's been struggling with. And we edited the post really intently 
because it's a serious topic and I have millions of followers and I would never just send somebody casually out on a stage to talk on my behalf. So everything I post, I get last eyes on. And the post that we edited isn't the one that got posted. And the old Mel Robbins, the negative, critical, you know, like kind of something's wrong, stressed out, that Mel Robbins, the pre-High Five Habit Mel Robbins, my default would have been, oh, everything, ooh, like this ooh, kind of reaction to it. The new Mel Robbins was like, oh, okay. I wonder if it was a tech glitch. Well, let's fix it. Like it's unbelievable to have a default that you have intentionally programmed in that's optimistic, encouraging, supportive. It's life-changing. Have you ever heard of slithering out of bed? Holy cow, I'm Mel Robbins. I'm so excited to teach this to you. It will change your life, okay? If you struggle with anxiety, with depression, if you have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning, slithering is something I want you to try. It is a form of somatic therapy and it's gonna change your life. It changed mine. I've been doing it for six weeks. And in fact, I wanted to make this video because I posted this video about it, just a short one the other day, and it exploded online. You had so many questions, so I wanted to dive deeper. So let me demonstrate. So when you wake up, oh, and you feel that heaviness, what I would do is the first thing I would do is I would high five my heart, which I taught you in the high five habit. I put a hand here and a hand here, and I just say, I'm okay, I'm safe. I'm loved. And that hand right here and right here, it just really grounds me and it tones the vagus nerve, which helps to flip from a state of fight or flight, dread, fleeing into a calmer place. And then I think about the fact that I'm about to slither out of this bed. I don't want to slither out of this bed. I don't feel ready to slither out of this bed. This is not something that makes me happy. This is not something that I want to do. Slithering out of bed in a moment where I'm depressed or grieving or anxious because I know that I'll feel better once I get moving, slithering out of bed is what I need to do. And so there would be mornings that I would use the five second rule to initiate it. So you can count backwards, five, four, three, two, one. You're under your covers, five, four, three, two, one. And then, I mean, you literally move in the, the direction of the floor. You just succumb to the resistance and then you're gonna move around. And, you know, there would be mornings Honestly, in the past six weeks that I would get to this point and I'd want to crawl in a fetal position like this and I'd lay there for a minute and then the dog would come over and lick me and then I'd move like this. And then the more that I did it, the less I would lay on the ground. I'd just kind of roll around and stretch. And then eventually when you're ready, whatever shape you want, because it's the resistance that you're feeling, you get on all fours and you just start to crawl. And you're staying low to the ground because you're giving in to the heaviness, but you're not throwing in the towel. You're moving with it. You're moving through it. And at some point as you're crawling, you will feel ready to just stand up. And it's almost like that sort of physical moving moves all that resistance out of you and through you in a way that is organic, it's doable. It feels like in a weird way, it sort of acknowledges and honors the depression and the grief or anxiety or sadness or overwhelm that you're feeling. And it's super empowering because you don't have to feel energized or motivated. And there's a lot of mornings where I don't. And knowing that I can use this technique to embody and move with the heaviness inside me as a way to move through it and get my power back, it's, it's absolutely incredible. So I want you to try it.
I want you to try slithering. I'm gonna answer some of your questions because you guys blew up my DMs and my comments when I posted that video. Um, how long have you been practicing the slither and why did you start? Well, I've been practicing for six weeks and I started because my therapist recommended it as a way to um, not, as a way to feel empowered uh, while I was facing so many changes in my life that felt too big to bear. That even though life is overwhelming, you still have power inside you to move through the things that are scaring the hell out of you right now. And sometimes you don't have to muster up a ton of strength. Sometimes all you gotta do is slither, seriously. Um, when would I use this technique? Well, you would use this technique, I think, any moment where it's just too much to bear. Like I kept saying to my therapist, intellectually, I know that I need to get up. Intellectually, I know that this kind of period from 5.30 a.m. until 10.30 a.m., that it's gonna get better with time. But physically, I can't push through it. And I'm starting to get scared of it. And so that's when she said, I think you need to lean into it. I think you need to take an embodied approach. And so I think anytime you feel that way, whether you're on the couch or maybe for you, it's not getting up in the morning, maybe you spend so much time at night kind of unwinding from the day that you have a really hard time getting from the couch to your bed. So maybe for you, it's like an end of the day transition from one place that you're sunk into, uh, into your bedroom. Um, have I noticed a difference? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've noticed a huge difference because I now have another tool in my toolbox. I mean, I've been using the five second rule for 14 years to five, four, three, two, one, push myself out of bed, force myself out of bed. This feels like something gentle and uh, just powerful in its own way. And I love having two different things I can do. What if I have a dog who will jump all over me? It's actually great because the dog like is worried about you because the dog can sense all that heaviness in you. And the dog also will probably bring some playful energy, which is probably gonna make it fat easier and faster for you to stand up because their energy will transfer to you. Um, what if my bed is high up or I have a wood floor or I sleep and I don't have the mobility to fall out of bed? That's a great question. I, if you have a high bed, roll the foot out first and then you can kind of like slide down, you know, like that and do that. I think if you sleep on the floor, maybe just roll around on the floor, right? So if you're, you know, on a, a, a futon on the floor or you sleep on a thermo rest or whatever, just roll off the thermo rest or roll away from where you are so that you get kind of moving. Um, that's a, probably a great way to start. And so whatever the slither or the slide or the embodiment of moving through the heaviness means to you, that's what you want to do. Um, let's see. Can you teach this technique to your kids? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think it's great for kids actually, because you're honoring how they feel. You're not trying to correct them or coerce them you're actually creating a deeper connection with them because you're honoring that they don't want to get out of bed. And so, they, oh, it's a morning and you're going to slither. You're going to slide out of bed so you can have fun with it. Um, what if you have a hard time feeling stuff in your body? I actually think this would help. Maybe it's hard to get out of bed because you are disconnected from your body. Like I was surprised. I was kind of scared to try this because if I already felt so scared in my body, it's going to sound weird, but if I already felt so scared in my body, Hiding under the covers gave me a false sense of safety, right? I'm hiding from the world, even though I hate the feelings of my body. So there was something scary about like allowing myself to slither out of that safe cocoon where I'm hiding from the world into the floor where you're open and, and all this stuff. And so I get that, but you've, I've been empowered by how quickly that heaviness that pinned me to the bed leaves as I roll and move and start crawling and walking. And you know, the more you do it, the more you'll notice the faster you go from like crawling to actually standing up. I'm do it the questions. Oh, we've got one more. Um, can I use somatic therapy in other areas of my life? Absolutely. 
Like I, 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 somatic therapy, I believe, is just using your body as a way to move through things, whether it's meditation or it's deep breathing, or I would imagine that the cold exposure therapy and the ice baths that I do are a form of somatic therapy, yoga, um, uh, regardless of what form you practice, Tai Chi, even going outside, hiking, spending time in nature, deeper breathing. Those are all forms of somatic therapy that we all need to integrate more into our day-to-day -day life. We were talking and you said something really interesting about morning routine. So tell me what happened. Well, so I've been doing Spring It On, which I've been loving. And you know, last week did a little friend cleanse yep. uh, in a good way. Yep. And you know, this week is all about the morning routine and the evening routine. And I said, I feel like I have morning routine envy. Now, how many of you <laughs> have morning routine envy? that you read about all these influencers and these famous people and their fabulous morning routines with the infrared sauna and the meditation for 45 yeah. minutes and the vegan macrobiotic blue algae whatchamacallit thing. Mm -hmm. And I, that's I your... feel like I kind of, I was like, oh, I get to see Mel. Maybe she'll just tell me what to do. I'm going to tell you what yeah, to do. Yeah, I, well, I feel like I need to know because I feel like I've tried, I've listened to friends. I've tried a couple of their, like, and I do this and I put my and have gratitude. And I think, I think you really do need to do what feels most organic to you, but my instinct is to reach for my phone. I mean, that's honest. How many of you, are you somebody that the second that you wake up, you know you should practice gratitude, but you feel a little eye roll about that. You know you should exercise, but you just don't want to because you're not a morning person. And your first instinct is to reach for your phone. If you can relate to this, put your hands up. Put your hands up, yep, okay. So um, here's the thing about morning routines. I think morning routine envy is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that a lot of people lie about their morning routines. Mm -hmm. I think lying about your morning routine is a real thing. Mm -hmm. I think pretending you have the perfect morning routine is a real thing. Um, I'm, I'm about, when I'm home, I'm almost 80% in my morning routine. Mm -hmm. I get it done mm -hmm. because it's super simple. Right, so I mean, I think I need a simple one. Yes. And when I'm traveling, I almost never get the whole thing done mm -hmm. because there's too many excuses. I am in a different time zone. I usually, what's wrong? You're looking at me. Oh, Megan gave me a look. No, I have an itch in my ear. Oh, you have an itch in your ear? <laughs> Jeremy's gonna get it. <laughs> Thank you. And so I think the key to having a morning routine and morning routines are critical because how you start your day has a massive proven impact on how your day turns out. There's one piece of research that I think is really profound, and this comes from Sean Anker. I talked about this yesterday, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you um, this too, Susie. If you consume three minutes, mm -hmm. just three minutes of negative news, mm -hmm. of negative television, mm -hmm. of negative emails, maybe stressful emails from work or stressful texts from friends, you have more than a 50% chance eight hours later to say you had a bad day. And the reason why is because of what consuming that kind of information does to your mind. It literally sets your mind up to be on the lookout for things going wrong. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why a morning routine is, is actually so important is because number one, it determines what your priority for the day is. Mm -hmm. And we also know based on research that your mood in the morning it impacts your productivity all day long. For sure. So here's what I do. Then this will get rid of your morning routine envy because you have a 14 year old son. I do. So my mornings are different every day. Okay. Like sometimes getting him off to school or sometimes I have an early job or sometimes, so it's not like, oh, every day and then I have to be at work by nine and that's just not my real life. Yeah, that's not my real life. That is yeah. not real life. No. I don't think okay. that's anybody's real life okay. at this Fair. point in the world, right? Yeah. But we look at other people's morning routines and are like, how do you have two hours to do all that? I'm sorry. Um, unless you have, uh, unless you live a fantasy life. Well, I do have fantasies of like, oh, I'm gonna wake up and get into down dog, and then I'm gonna, like it's like, a, I have fantasies of that, I do. I love that, okay, <laughs> I do too, and none of those fantasies come true. No, because I'm not in the mood. Oh, good. Okay, so this is, there's, there's major uh, takeaways today. First of all, if you're not getting your morning routine done, it's too complicated. Secondly, if you're banking on your mood being the motivator, you've already lost. 
because you will actually never be in the mood to get out of a warm, cozy, awesome bed. And thinking that your mood is what you need first is why most of us fail. Okay. You have to make a decision because you know that even though it's painful to get out of bed and even though it's painful to not reach for your phone, you have to make a decision that you're not going to because of the impact it's gonna have on the rest of your day. And so there's only one thing I want you to do. Okay. You ready? Tell me. When the alarm goes off, you're gonna get up. Yep. Okay. And then if do you use your alarm do you use your phone as an alarm? I do, but I most days I don't need an alarm. I'm just body clock. Wow. I do not have Today, that issue. I needed an alarm, but <laughs> okay. most days, you know, because we sort of get up, get ready for school, the whole thing. Great. Okay, so I I prefer that you not put your phone in your bedroom. Okay. That way you can't reach for it. Okay. Because it's a habit to yeah. reach for it and you don't even realize that you're reaching for it. And so what I would prefer that you do is that you put it in your bathroom or you put it in your kitchen or you okay. put it on the floor in the corner. Okay. And since you have a 14 year old who needs you, just leave the ringer on, but yeah. turn the, um, the buzzer off, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. If you need me, call me. Okay. He will text you in the middle of the night, but he probably won't call. Right, well you know he what I'm can saying? also walk down the yeah, hall. Yeah, he can walk yeah. down the hall. Yeah. Okay, great. So. Um, so that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get up, and then you're gonna do something that I call self before sell. Okay. I want you to find, let's start with five minutes. Okay. Just five minutes. Um, because you can find five minutes even if you have a 5 a.m. wake up call yes. to go do an early makeup appointment, mm -hmm. right? Or browse appointment. Yeah. You're gonna find five minutes for self before cell, wherever my cell, that cell, we're gonna use this as a cell phone. <laughs> and the reason why I want you to do that is because I want you to take five minutes, make your cup of coffee, and I want you to, you can either do a gratitude practice where you literally just say, write down three things that you're grateful for. Now here's a trick about gratitude. Mm -hmm. Writing down what you're grateful for doesn't work unless you do it this way. Because if you, if I ask you what you're grateful for, everybody says the same thing. I'm grateful to be alive, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for my health, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for my family. Mm -hmm. And that's so generic mm -hmm. that you're not retraining your brain. Right. You've gotta add in the because. I'm grateful for X because. Okay. And the added detail will make you change up what you say, and it will also train your mind in a way that's more detailed, so it actually has a lasting impact on the way that you view the world. So you can either do a gratitude practice, or you can do um, what I do. Sitting for all this? Wherever you want, okay. away from your phone. Not in bed? I'd prefer you get out of bed. Okay. Yes, good question, get out of bed. <laughs> Um, I would prefer you actually get up and move away from your bedroom okay. and just start your, like you can be making a cup of coffee as yeah. you're doing this. Yeah. Here's what I do. The thing that I ask myself is, what is the one thing that matters most to me today? And when you ask yourself that question, you've now just set your number one priority. It could be that you make it to your son's uh, whatever, theater you know, show. At, theater show, right? It could be that you um, do a great job at the 11 o'clock appointment. Mm -hmm. It could be that you spend 30 minutes working on something related to your mobile brow service, right? What's it called? Flybrow. Flybrow, you're in LA, Flybrow. And San go. Francisco and New York. And San Francisco <laughs> and New York, Flybrow. <laughs> Little entrepreneur right here. <laughs> Awesome. Um, it could be that you're just going to find 20 minutes to really work on, I don't know, you're going to do a Google search and see what other brands are doing. Just one thing. I only want you to think of one thing. Okay. And what you're going to be leveraging <clears throat> is something called the progress principle. Okay. It's a piece of research from Harvard um, Business School. Okay. And people that focus on one thing that matters to them every day, the reports around how much momentum it creates you're more than 60% more likely to actually get that thing done. And more importantly, it gives you control before you let the world yes. in. This is so manageable, this is good. Yes, this see that's so the thing. Good. It has to be manageable or you won't do it. Right. That's why I'm not putting downward dog in. Yeah. That's why I'm not putting in, if the gratitude thing is not your thing, don't do it. But the gratitude thing feels the most organic and yep. like believable okay. than all the other things. Yeah. I yeah, so all I want you to do, what are you going to do? Give me just the simple steps that you're going to start doing as your five-minute morning routine. Well, I'm going to put the phone not next to my bed. I'm going to get up and while I'm doing other things, possibly spend five minutes thinking about the one thing I intend to do that day. That matters to that you. That matters to me. 
Yes. Okay. okay. And by doing that, putting yourself before your cell, when you think about it just from a common sense standpoint, what does that mean about how you are starting your day? I'm prioritizing me. Boom. That is the most important thing that you could do in your morning. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that you prioritize yourself because we know once you pick up your phone, your entire day is hijacked and gone. That's true. Yes. And also emails are like for other people responding to this. Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.